some of the challenges that I faced before coming out of the closet was really, I think the biggest one that I remember was how to talk about it. My name is Michael and this is my story. I mean, I knew that I was attracted to men when I was, I was really young, you know, but I don't think, I didn't realize that it was anything different, probably until, um, God, like maybe like late elementary, early middle school or something, you know, when people used people start talking about it, and I just uh, then sort of realized like, oh, like other guys my age don't feel the same way that I do and um, then I started to like really feel like some shame and guilt about it because you know people uh, especially at that age are not very accepting of that especially where I grew up. I knew my family wouldn't care because my, my family was always like very much because they probably knew I would imagine but they you know it was um, I knew that my fa I would be okay with my family but and school and stuff like that where I was growing up, I did not, uh, that was one of my biggest concerns. Um, my name is Julie Stern and I'm Michael's mom. Him specifically saying to me that he was gay, I think for me it was such a Maybe, I don't know, a non-event because I knew and it was not a big deal to me, so. I think there were times when I remember he, I thought that he was more effeminate. Um, and I, I do remember one time that was horrible, I was horrible to him. And we were trick or treating in our neighborhood, and we had a very upscale, we had some upscale type snobby neighbors. And um, I wanted to fit in more with them, I wanted my kids to fit in more with them, and I was very aware that Michael did not fit in with them. And I remember just getting really angry with him, frustrated, well, angry with him, I guess. And kind of yelling at him about it, and it's one of my worst memories. Sorry. If I was given the opportunity to change and make myself straight, I don't think I would. I mean, you know, at this point in my life, it's like, who, who gives a shit anymore, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, and, um, it's been such a, uh, it's part of who I am, you know, and I wouldn't change any like fundamental thing about who I am ever. Um, one of my darkest moments, I think, um, uh, I was, it was probably around the age of like 25, I think, when I, I realized that I had become addicted to drugs and alcohol, fit like physically addicted to them. Um, and, you know, I hadn't, I had never really meant to. I, I didn't know. I, I wasn't educated about it. I didn't, I knew what I was doing, but it, like in some weird, strange way, I was able to like detach from it, you know? And then I woke up one day and I was in withdrawal and I was, I was really sick and I remember thinking like, oh shit, like, I, I don't know what to do except for to do more so I don't ever feel like this again. Um, and, you know, I think for me, leading up to, and it was like just a strange feeling of like, oh my God, that happened to me. You know, I come from a good family, like an educated family, you know, like I, I went to good schools. Like I, 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 you just don't ever think it will happen to you, you know? And, um, but it did, and it happened slowly. You know, it happened with like weekend vendors that turned like at bars and clubs that turned into me taking a pill that turned into me snorting something that turned into me smoking. Like it just, and before I knew it, I was 25 years old, and I was spending all my money on drugs. Something I would say to someone who's struggling to come out or struggling with uh, substance abuse, um, mental health, any of that stuff, is to remind them that they're not alone, and that there's a whole 
world. There's a whole community outside of this the sort of isolated experience it can be to keep that secret. Um, there's people out there that will help and that they're worthy just by virtue of being a human being. They're worthy of love and they're worthy of respect and they're worthy of being able to find their own way in life. They don't, you don't have to live life according to anybody else's notions or rules or anything. Like you, you, you're, a human being who deserves a chance to find what in your heart is is yours, you know? Like that's what I think is so powerful about um, the experience of being in recovery, the experience of coming out is you get to find like what is authentically you. I work as the alumni coordinator here at CAS Centers in West Hollywood. One of the reasons I'm actually really proud to work at CAS Centers is, I mean, not only are we LGBTQ owned and operated, I mean, we have many members of staff, um, both in administrative and clinical roles that identify as LGBTQ. Um, and so that, that allows us to really actually understand the specific needs of the LGBTQ client here at CAST. Um, it's not just, you know, putting up a rainbow flag every June and pretending that that's good enough. Uh, part of my job is I, I go out and I meet with uh, LGBTQ providers in the community so that when something comes up for one of our clients, I can make sure that I, if we can't, you know, take care of it here, I, I make sure that I'm sending them to someone that that will understand and that has experience dealing with the LGBTQ population in West Hollywood.